It looks kind of scary now that I'm close to it. If this thing runs at me, I might freak. Ah! Hey there, explorers. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report. And today, we're exploring a riparian system here in central North Carolina on the hunt for a spider species, which might be the largest non-web spinning spider in the state of North Carolina. Okay, right up here is one of my absolute favorite spiders of all time. Beautiful. This one is so pretty. Check this out. This beautiful spider is the marbled orb weaver. And they are called the marbled orb weaver because they have this absolutely gorgeous pattern that you can see on the abdomen right there. Now, another common name for this species is actually the pumpkin spider because oftentimes that abdomen and even their thorax and legs is going to be this combination of yellow and orange and just other really vibrant, really beautiful colors. Now, right now, as she's crawling around on my hands, she's actually continuing to spin silk. That's actually what she was doing right back there. She's literally spinning her web right now. And that's what orb weaving spiders are known to do. They spin these huge webs, these beautiful intricate webs of the super strong spider silk. And that is how they capture their prey. They do have a venomous bite and they will use that bite to incapacitate prey and liquefy the insides. But their web is the thing that actually traps the prey, that actually captures it. But not all spiders use these big, beautiful webs to catch their prey. There are actually some spiders that rely on their speed, agility, and power to capture prey. And we are searching for one of those spiders in today's video. So we will get this beautiful pumpkin spider right back in her web. And we'll keep searching for our target species, which is about, I don't know, five times as big as this one right here. Now you can actually find these spiders in a pretty wide variety of habitats but they do tend to select for habitats near small aquatic systems. So that's where we're searching today. Okay, I feel like I find these spiders like all the time when I'm not looking for them. If I'm ever searching for any kind of semi-aquatic snake, there's always these fishing spiders hanging out on the rocks and sticks, never feeling to freak me out. But now that I'm actually searching, <laughs> I can't find one. What the heck? Okay, so what we've got on this log right here is our target species of spider for the day. This species can be difficult to catch because oftentimes they will literally dive underwater. So I'm gonna have to kind of scooch up under it so that when it dives, I can just catch it gracefully, hopefully. That's my plan. It looks kind of scary now that I'm close to it, but I'm sure it's fine. Have you ever been by fishing spider? If this thing runs at me, I might freak. Ah! <laughs> I knew it was gonna do it. I couldn't stop myself from reacting to it. Oh no, hold on, I'll find it. <laughs> now I have like a personal vendetta. No, we didn't touch my, oh, it's still here. It's still, oh, it's gonna go under the log. Okay, hold on. You can't scare me, probably, unless you can. Hello, oh, why are you so big? Let's make an arrangement, shall we? I have a, I have a trade, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so the fishing spiders, in order to capture the prey, these are ambush predators. Their common name, or the common name of this family, comes from the fact that the largest members of this genus, like the dark fishing spider, are actually large enough that they can prey on small fish. And they have some remarkable adaptations that allows them to persist and hunt prey in these aquatic environments. So like you saw, maybe, when I was trying to catch it, they can actually go under the water and they can float on top of the water. Now, I know it sounds crazy that a spider would be able to go underwater and not drown, right? And they don't have gills or anything like that, but what they do, they actually trap air bubbles in the sensory hairs, and each of those air bubbles provides a little bit of oxygen that they can use underwater. They're gonna run over, grab it with their fangs, inject this pretty potent neurotoxic venom. This venom is not medically significant to humans, so if you do get bit, it's not gonna do anything serious to you. It's supposed to feel about like a bee or a wasp sting in terms of pain level, because it's mostly designed to paralyze the nervous systems of its prey items, which is especially important in these aquatic systems because it's flowing water. So if this spider injects venom and it's not very strong, and that pride floats downstream, well, not only has it wasted venom, it's also missed out on a meal. They are using sensory hairs on their legs to detect prey, but they also have a pretty exceptional vision compared to other spiders because they don't spin webs, and they're using those eyes to find prey as well as using those extremely sensitive hairs. Now, obviously, this is a pretty large spider. In fact, I would say this is the largest spider that I have caught in North Carolina. 
Carolina. And because they get pretty big and they can be kind of hairy and a little bit freaky looking, maybe tempting if you see one near your house to kind of, you know, maybe squash it or something. But there is no reason to be scared of these spiders. I'm literally holding this one in my hand. It is not biting me. It's not being aggressive, anything like that. And not only are they pretty docile and harmless to humans, they're also really important for ecosystems. Even though they aren't as high up on the food chain as something like a snake, they are still secondary consumers. And so they're really important for transferring energy to higher levels of the trophic pyramid. And I hope that the next time you see one in the wild, you can appreciate them for the beautiful and uniquely adapted animals that they really are. You really go back to your log? The water was just deep enough. <laughs> My friend. If you liked learning about this amazing spider, I think you'd also enjoy the orb weaver video I made just a few weeks ago. Here is your sneak peek at the species that's gonna be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. Until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.